I am fascinated by sport in this country. Did you know that drugs were banned in sport in Britain in 1928, but drugs testing only came in in July 1966? Up until then, we relied upon the sportsmen themselves to tell us if they were taking drugs or not. <laughs> Hence, 40 years of British sporting achievement. <laughs> After 1966, cock all. <laughs> anyway, how does that work, drugs testing before that? Going up to 12-year-old gymnast. Hello, love. Are you taking drugs? No. <laughs> I'm going for a shave. <laughs> but I'm a big football fan, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a huge fan of the England football team, and I was gutted and disturbed and devastated when, in November 2007, England were knocked out of the European Championships. By who? By who? by Croatia, <laughs> We got beaten by a knitting team. <laughs> but we got them in the World Cup group, and we beat them away. 4-1, Theo Walcott got three goals. I was so happy. Oh, did I gloat with the croats. <laughs> I said, we beat you, you croats, you bunch of croats. They goes, hey, you, it's not croat, it's croat. <laughs> Learn to speak English. <laughs> I was about to kick off, but they, then they recognised me. They said, hey, you, you're an actor? I said, yes, I am. He goes, oh, I'm a big fan. I went, thanks. <laughs> he said, well, what are you doing next? I said, well, I'm doing a panto next. They said, really? I said, yes. He goes, which, uh, which panto are you doing? I said, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing Wind in the Willows. He goes, oh, really? Which part are you playing? I said, I'm playing the Toad of Toad Hall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get in my Boat. <laughs> which will sink because it can't flow out. <laughs> I'll get wet and cold, so I've got to get out and put on my coat. <laughs> I can't get in the house because it's filled with weasels and stoats. <laughs> Interesting wordplay that ultimately leads to nowhere. <laughs> the Daily Telegraph. You don't know where we are, do you? I do, we're right here. By Shoshin Sun. So where's this Taliban stronghold? Yeah, I told you here, so it's around about there. Well, I can't see anything. Well, it's because they're disguised as trees and stuff. The Taliban are disguising themselves as trees? Yes, according to my sources. OK, you know what? I think this is bullshit. I think you are full of crap. I don't know where Six found you, but you've contributed nothing to this mission. Nothing. Yeah. Well, you can't just leave me here. Oh, there are six. Flipping Nora. You haven't seen any British soldiers go past here, have you? No. Mm. All right, thanks, man. Hang on. Don't I recognise you from somewhere? <laughs> no, 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 I definitely recognise you. Now, don't tell me, don't tell me. ZZ Top. <laughs> ZZ Top. I get that all the time. All right, tell her, mate. Be lucky. <laughs> Previously on Darts Player's Wives. People think the Darts Player's Wives got it all. Romance. Mr and Mrs Van Thong. Dick is the Dutch champion, currently rated number seven in the world. Dick, the Mrs. I'm Lambrisco. <laughs> <laughs> Glamour. Yeah, just had the pool put in last week. I double top work, I'll admit. Lovely place you've got here. <coughs> Thanks, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> and sophistication. All that blonde hair, all those darts, all that power. Ooh, looks like someone's crowbarred herself into a size 16. Take you with the hands of my husband, Lambrisco. I wouldn't touch anything that's been near you, love. <laughs> Helen! 
There's a nasty mess in your pool. You might want to clear it up. Do something, you fat tosser! <laughs> we all know revenge is a dish best served cold. <laughs> Welcome to the world of darts players' wives. The planet is in trouble. The environment is going berserk. Meteors, showers, lightning. The Titanic will all get into trouble. I'll lay low in the Bracken Beacons or hide down a well for a month. But the planet can't do that. It's up to us. I'm Steve, the Dragon Thompson. Britain's dirtiest and most loved street fire. This time, I like to show you how to lead a greener life. <laughs> These days, we've got to watch out for our carbon footprints. I'm not quite sure what that's about. I think it means wipe your feet. <laughs> Common sense, really. More dirt in the house means more hoovering, which uses up the winds. <laughs> but there are even more unusual ways to help save the planet. Plastic bags are bad for the environment. So why not use Old underpants. <laughs> Not only are they biodegradable, but it also means people won't nick your stuff when you put it down in the bus queue, when you're stretching off. <laughs> That's because it stinks of shits. <laughs> Oi! You owe me money! Now, what's wrong with what I just did there? That's right. The wood in this bat is not from a sustainable forest. <laughs> this bat is made from Scandinavian pine. So for every tree harvested, two more are planted. So you can collect your protection money whilst protecting the planet. Petrol is a major pollutant, so we must all look for alternative energies. So we all need to find alternative energies. <laughs> if you're off to a riot or want to send someone a message, always use biofuel in your petrol bomb. And fair trade cotton for the rag. <laughs> oh, Come on. Come on. If you have enjoyed this environmental message, you might like to reach for the stars with my new video, How to Start Your Own Space Program. <laughs> During the Second World War, the government uh, used to take away railings from outside people's houses. It was part of the war effort. They used to melt it down and uh, create more bombs and guns to rain down on Germany. Uh, well, drop bombs. Obviously, dropping guns on Germany is counterproductive, <laughs> should we say. <laughs> but then we realised that actually none of those railings were melted down. This was all a propaganda exercise to make people feel they were part of the war effort. It would make common people feel they were helping the lads out in the war, but in fact, Taking away the railings made absolutely no difference whatsoever. Do you think recycling's the same thing? <laughs> because you have all these, have you seen the advert? You know, let's save the planet. Let's turn this can into a car or an aeroplane. <laughs> Just what part of the planet are we trying to save? <laughs> See, that's what happens in this country. We, we have absolutely no idea. For example, some people were trying to protest against fuel prices. And a bunch of lorry drivers said, let's protest against fuel prices. They all met at a service station. They filled up with petrol first. <laughs> protest against fuel prices. Filled up with petrol. Then they went down the M62 together. That's a bit like 
protesting against the crack dealer in your area by buying up all his crack and smoking it. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I, I'm protesting against the crack dealer. By doing what? By buying up all his crack and smoking it. Has it made a difference? I couldn't give a monkeys. <laughs> Where are my bitches and hairs? <laughs> It makes absolutely no sense. And even when I went to the uh, video store to get that Al Gore film, and I went up to the guy, I said, uh, do you have an inconvenient truth? He goes, yes, you eat too much, fat boy, stop it. 